Hey there, Angry Faithful. I just wanted to drop in, bend your ear a little bit, get your attention. So if you're not listening, drop what you're doing and pay attention to me. Because I'm here to inform you that not only can you get your daily, maybe if you're binging it, I'm not sure, that's entirely up to you, but you can multiply your doses of angry me fuckery by paying attention to all of the platforms upon which you can find either the dulcet tones of my voice and David's voice or my pretty face and David's not so pretty face. Anyways, digressing, we, not only on we are on YouTube, we are on Spotify, we're on Rumble, we're on Google, Apple Podcast. We have a TikTok page. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Facebook. So if you find yourself fuckery deprived, curl up with a nice hot mug of shut the fuck up and just listen. Open those ear holes and be prepared to be cream pied like it's the first time. Thanks for listening. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Psychos and Socius Pass, we actually got Johnny back. Yay. But today we're going to talk about Joseph James D'Angelo Jr. Uh, this guy was actually interesting uh, because of all the stuff that he he's done and everything like that. He was... He's known as the uh, East Area Rapist. Uh, the the Sailor Ransacker. And the, the original, it went from Night Stalker to the, the original, original Night, Night Stalker. Stalker. Which we're actually we do. Uh, did we ha have we done Richard Ramirez? Dude, I don't know. We've done so. Maybe, maybe not. That was another one I was. Uh, I was wondering about. I thought we did. I'm gonna shy like we do the whole uh uh squirrel uh oh, no. stuff and everything. So I think we have. I'll I'll check it up later. Anyway, the the. The, the buzzards are, are, are circling. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Joseph James D'Angelo Jr. was born November 8, 1945 in Bath, New York. That's an actual town, Bath. That's weird. Uh, to Catherine Louis de Goat, de Grot. Sorry, uh, and Joseph James D'Angelo, a sergeant in the U.S. Army. He has two sisters and a younger brother. A, a relative reported that when D'Angelo was a child, he witnessed his seven-year-old sister uh, sister's rape by two airmen in the warehouse in West Germany, where the family uh, station at the time. Following D'Angelo's conviction, one of his sisters claims that he had abused. He was abused by their father while he was growing up, which <sighs> this is like a sad, sad thing. I mean, we constantly have to look at uh, these guys and it's like, was he abused? Yes. Okay, moving on. Because usually these people are abused. It's, it's just, it's like an MO. They were, they were abused and everything like that. I know the fact that he witnessed his seven-year-old sister, seven-year-old yeah. sister, getting raped in a warehouse in Germany by two airmen. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> but uh, D'Angelo joined the U.S. Navy uh, in September 1964 and served 22 months during the uh, Vietnam War as a damage controlman on the uh, cruiser USS Cambry. And the uh, destroyer tender U.S. Piedmont, 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 uh, beginning in August 1980, uh, 1968, D'Angelo attended 
Sierra College in Rockland, California, where he graduated with an associate's degree in police science with honors. He attended Sacramento State University in 1971, where he earned a bachelor's degree in criminology justice. D'Angelo later took uh, postgraduate courses and further police training at a college in San Quais and Vanessa. Vanessa? Uh, then completed 32 week police internship at a police department in Roseville. As a police officer, uh, from May 1973 to August 1976, D'Angelo was a uh, was a burglar unit uh, police officer in uh, Exeter. Having recur uh, <coughs> get a little drinky drinky. Uh, he was. Well, I'm over here crunching on ice cubes. Uh, he then served in Auburn from August 1976 to 1979 when he was arrested for shoplifting a hammer and dog repellent. He was sentenced to six months probation and fired that October. During the process of being fired, D'Angelo threatened to kill <coughs> the chief of police and allegedly stopped the chief's house. No signs there. Well, in uh, May of 1970, law enforcement student D'Angelo became engaged to a nursing student, Bonnie Jean Colwell, <clears throat> a classmate at Sierra College, but she broke it off in 71 after D'Angelo became manipulative and abusive. Go figure. <clears throat> after the breakup, he threatened her with a gun in order to force her to marry him. And in 73, he married Sharon Marie Huddle in Placer or Placker. I think that's pronounced placard in 1980 they purchased a house in citrus heights where he was eventually arrested decades later huddle became a divorce attorney in 1982 and they had three daughters two were born in sacramento and one was born in los angeles before the couple separated in 91 in july 2018 several months after d'angelo's arrest huddle filed for a divorce which was finalized the following year what? Wow, that's that's a long time. Right. D'Angelo's employment history during the 1980s is unknown. From in 89 to his retirement in 2017, he worked as a truck mechanic at Save Mart Supermarkets Distribution Center in Roseville. Shop smart. Shop S smart. smart. <laughs> yes. All right. He was arrested in 96 for failing to pay for gas, over failing to pay for gas, but the charge was dismissed. Oh, back in the days when you could gas and dash remember those god yes when i worked at 7-eleven there because because the 7-eleven i worked at i worked at the one at burke they wouldn't transfer me down here in wichita falls for the longest time for fucking some reason but anyways even though i had to work like whenever i worked overtime i ended up working in other 7 Elevens. but because of the location of that 7-eleven because as soon as they get the gas turned on and everything they would just go ahead and jet out up on the highway. Well, until, go ahead. And until they actually told me, I was like, listen, this is a known site for, for this. They should leave their money. Uh, not even, a, it, was, it was like some of the people were like, can I just leave my uh, card? I was like, no. And now they're, everything's like, uh, Pay at, uh, the pay at the pump and everything so it doesn't really matter well <clears throat> okay d'angelo's brother-in-law claimed that d'angelo would have been, casually bring up the east area rapists in conversation around the time of the original crimes names neighbors reported that he frequently engaged in loud profane outbursts one neighbor reported that his family received a phone message from d'angelo threatening to deliver a load of death because of their barking dog. A little extreme, right? Just a um, wee bit. Just a wee bit. Um, <clears throat> he was living with a daughter and a granddaughter at the time of his arrest. Um, DNA evidence linked him to eight murders in Goleta, Ventura, Dana Point, and Irvine. Uh, the other two murders in Goleta lacking DNA evidence were linked by modus operandi, or M.O., for those of us who are into the whole brevity thing um d'angelo pleaded guilty to three other murders 
in two in Rancho Cordova and one in Visala. Or uh, hold on, that's Colin. Hey, bud. Oh, hi. Hi. What can I do for you? So I just got some pretty good news. They're 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 gonna come out with a VR Assassin's Creed game. An Assassin's Creed game in VR. Hold on, just a sec. Hold hold on, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. A programming note: We're temporarily going to break in on our psychos and sociopaths uh, segment. For breaking video game news brought to you by Colin. No, you go right on ahead. We're we're recording. This is this is live. People can hear you. It's all good. Uh, it's gonna be called uh Assassin's Creed Nexus. And the Tom Henderson guy announced it. You're gonna be able to play as like Ezio and some of the other assassins. And you're gonna be able to delete the vapes and like you have to hold down and press a button. You gotta flick your wrist to like activate the hidden blade. Mm -hmm. You're and you need to climb and all that. More than likely the game will be broken when it comes out and it will require probably like a six gig update for a day one. A day one well, patch, but, but it's all it's. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's going to release on PC, but I know for a fact it is going to be released on Meta VR, which is like the Oculus. Right. So, and the world's largest belt buckle in Uranus. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll talk. In the morning, um, yes. There will be bacon. There will be eggs. Well, and, and, then, and then and then we're going to hydrate plenty because you've got practice tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Later. Later. All right. Back to the okay, show. Back to the show. It was a long suspected that the training grounds of the criminal uh, criminal who became the East Area uh, rapist was uh, Venezuela. Is that how you pronounce that? Oh, wait. <clears throat> Visalia. Yeah, I was going to say Visalia. Uh, Visela crime uh, dating back to the early May 1973 and other sprees like that of uh, the Cordova cat burglar <clears throat> and the Excelsior Rans Exter Ransacker as well as the, the Visela uh, burglaries that took place after the McGreen shooting McGowan shooting. McGowan are now suspect to be linked as well. Over a pillar of 20 months, D'Angelo is believed to have been responsible <clears throat> for one murder and around 120 burglaries. I'm trying to think. Okay. Okay, 20 months. That's okay. I was just trying to do the math on that real quick. It's like a high point barely. It's like in 20 months, at least one a week or so. In late uh, April 2018, the Vesela uh, police chief started that <clears throat> while there is no DNA evidence linking D'Angelo to the Central Valley cases, his department had uh, other evidence that played a role in the investigation and was confirmed that the bill is the. God, I, I don't know why I can't do that word. Uh, the ransacker had been captured, though the status status of limitations for burglaries uh, each expired. D'Angelo was uh, formally charged on August 13th, 2018, with the first degree murder of Cla Claudia? Claudia? Claude Snelling at 75. Snelling. In 2020, D'Angelo pleaded guilty to the uh, Snelling murder. 
And we're just going to bypass the burglaries and just go to the East Area Rapist. D'Angelo moved to Smack Manor area in 1976, where his criminal uh, escalated from burglary to rape. See, on, on most of these cases and everything, though, they go from, it's like a, what do you call it? That little, they inch away to see what they can get away with. Right, and that's and that's always the case. It always starts <clears throat> somewhere. It, like uh, the exhalation, exhalation, exhilaration. Uh, yeah, of the crime. No, uh, escalation oh. of the crimes. Yeah, I had to work, work my head. I mean, they go from one, they go to the other. A lot of people believe that you know, at one point in time, the once they get to a certain point in some cases that the person would just go oh no i i think it could stop now i'm <clears throat> i shouldn't be doing this anymore but if they don't get caught and everything like that sometimes sometimes very rarely uh they actually turn over a new leaf and everything so but The crime is initially uh, centered uh, on the unincorporated areas in Charmin. Dang words. Okay, Carmichael, Citrus Heights, and Rancho Corva in East Sacramento. His initial uh, MO was stock middle class neighborhoods at night in search of women who were alone in a one story home usually near a school creek trail or other open spaces that would provide quick escape he was seen a number of times but always successfully fled on one occasion he sh he shot and severely wounded a young pursuer most victims had uh, had seen or heard a prowler on their property before the attacks, which most cases uh, and stuff like that, they want to uh, make sure they can get get in and get out, uh, figure out what's a good good way to. Uh, they basically stalk the person. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually, it takes from what from what. Uh, uh, one detective I was talking to, it usually takes probably about one to two weeks before the act, the guy, if you don't see a stalker, if you see a stalker and everything like that, it's like one or two weeks before they actually act on their urges, sometimes like months to a year. Mm -hmm. But police believe that the offender uh, would conduct extensive reconnaissance and targeting neighborhoods looking into the windows and prowling in the yards before selecting a home to attack it was believed that he sometimes entered the homes of future victims to unlock windows unload uh, guns and plant ledger day Lit plant litigers hold What's on that it is it's it's a weapon usually handheld uh litigure it's it's uh it's rope, a chain, chain rope scarf, scarf. Oh, something to strangle a person yeah uh he frequently telephoned future victims sometimes for months in advance to learn their daily routine god i i i don't, I, I don't like stalkers it's so weird uh it, it's just this is that diminish of uh uh you're destroying a person's uh, ideal of security mm -hmm. cuz you know you get to point a to point b to point a to point b and it's just it's so scary cuz they're always calling you they're always uh especially if it's a person that you know they're always like wanting to know where you're at what you're doing i just I don't even like what if you tell me it's like, hey, I'm gonna go over the uh, over this place, blah blah blah. 
unless I personally know you, I will not give you any kind of fucking information. Mm-mm. If uh, if it's a person that like I somewhat know, and I'm like, uh, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, why are you doing that? It's not your fucking business. I barely even know you. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, although D'Angelo originally targeted women alone in their homes with uh, with children, he eventually preferred attacking couples. This charged his MO to believe to uh, be a direct result of many reports claiming he only attacked women alone in the homes. His usual uh, method was breaking in through the window and sliding glass doors, awaking, uh, waking the, the, the sleeping occupants with a flashlight, threatening them with a handgun. Victims were especially bound with rope, often shoelaces uh, that he found or brought with him, then blindfold and gagged the towels that he had uh, uh, ripped into strips. The female victims usually forced uh, to tie up their male companion before she was bound. The bindings were often so tight that the victim's hands were numb for hours after being untied. He then separated the couples, often st- uh, stacking dishes on the mill's back and threatened to kill any everyone in the house if he heard them rattle. He would move the woman into a living room and rape her, often repeatedly. One, re- one police reported that DeLangelo repeatedly said, I hate you, Bonnie. During a 1978 attack, the 70, 37th attack, God damn. That that is so. Who the fuck's Bonnie? Anyways, D'Angelo sometimes spent hours in the home ransacking closets, drawers. Bonnie was the nursing student that broke up with him. Oh, okay, yeah, makes sense now. Uh, (laughs) it just shows how short my memory is. Hi, have we met? (laughs) Yeah, no. Name's Ted. Eating food in the kitchen, drinking beer, raping the woman again, and making additional threats. Victims sometimes thought he had left the house before he jumped from the darkness. He typically stole items off of personal objects, items of lo- uh, little value, but occasionally uh, cash and firearms. He then crept away, leaving victims uncertain if he had left. He believed to escape on foot through a series of yards and use a bicycle to go home or to a car making extensive use of parks, schoolyards, creek beds, and other uh, spaces that kept him off the street. The East, uh, East Area Rapes is operating in Sacramento County for the first attack in 1976 until 1977. After three months ago, a three months gap, he struck in a nearby San uh, Quentin San County, Joaquin. San, San, Joaquin. San Joaquin. Uh, County, San Joaquin in County. September before returning to Sacramento for all but one of the next 10 attacks. The rapist attacked five times during the summer of 1978 in San Luis and Yolo uh, counties before ap- disappearing for three months, attacking, moved primarily to Costa Cora, uh, Contra Costa County in October. Yeah. And it lasted until July of 79. Yeah. Good God. 50 attacks in all. Jesus. <clears throat> it's. It, it really gets me. That That's just these, his rapes. Yeah. It really gets me on people like this. That. Man, they should be put down like a dog, honestly. And I said this on, I think, the last episode. That people like that aren't aren't I don't consider those humans anymore. Yeah. Now, let me see here. A young we'll Sacramento with- cop, an, a young Sacramento couple, uh, Brian McGorry, a military policeman at Mather Air Force Base, and his wife Katie were walking their dog in the Rancho Cordova uh, area the night of February second, nineteen seventy eight, where five East Area rapist attacks had occurred. Now, they had fled after a confrontation in the street, but were chased down and shot to death. 
Some investigators suspected that they'd been murdered by the East Area Rapist because of their proximity to the other attacks locations and a shoelace was found nearby. The FBI announced on June 15th, 2016, that it was confident that the East Area Rapist had murdered the, uh, the, the Magorias. And on July 29th, 2020, he entered a plea, a plea of guilty to those murders. Uh. Um, the original Night Stalker cases went from 79 to 86. So shortly after the rape committed on July 5th of 79, he moved to Southern California and began killing his victims, uh, striking first in Santa Barbara County in o October of that year. But the attacks lasted until 81 with a lone attack in 86, but the couple in the first attack survived, alerting neighbors and forcing the intruder to flee. The other neighbor victims were murdered by gunshot or bludgeoning. Uh, since he was not linked, uh, D'Angelo not being linked to these crimes for decades, he was known as the Night Stalker in the area before being renamed the original Night Stalker after serial killer Richard Ramirez received the former nickname. Um, so there were seven murders during that span. Um, 79, 80, 81, 86. Uh, <clears throat> in December of 77, somebody claiming to be the East Area Rapist sent a poem, The Excitement's Crave, to the Sacramento Bee. The Sacramento's mayor off, uh, mayor's office and television station, KVIE. Uh, December 11th, a masked man eluded pursuit by law enforcement personnel after alerting authorities by telephone that he would strike on Watt Avenue that night. This is the poem all those mortals surviving birth upon facing maturity take inventory of their worth to prevailing society choosing values becomes a risk one self must seek satisfaction the selected route will unmask character when plans act take action accepting some work to perform at fixed pay but promise for more is a recognized social no uh, norm as is decorum seeking lore, achieving while others lifting, should be cause for deserving fame. Leisure attempts excitement seeking, what's right and expected seems tame. Jesse James has been seen by all, and son of Adam as an author. Son others now feel, huh? Son of, son Sam. of Sam. Did I say son of Adam? Son of Sam. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Okay. We keep others. every each other. Uh right right other uh, others now feel temptations call sacramento should make an offer to a movie of my to make a movie of my life that will pay for my planned exile just now i'd like to add the wife of a mafia lord to my file your east area rapist and deserving pest see you in the press or on tv God, uh, damn, see, he, 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 it, 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 it started out right, you know, started out pretty promising, but it just, the rhyme, the pentameter, just, just the, the whole pace of the thing just went to shit. Yeah. During the investigation in Danville of the 42nd attack, investigators discovered three sheets of notebook paper near, uh, where a suspect vehicle had reportedly been parked. They believe the pages were dropped accidentally, perhaps by falling out of a bag. The first sheet appeared to be a homework essay on General George Armstrong Custard. Man, that's a tongue twister. Uh, the second sheet contained a journal style uh, entry describing a teacher who had made students write lines which the author found humiliating. If you want to read that, you're a. Okay. Mad is the word. The word that reminds me of sixth grade. I hated that year. I wish I had known what was going to be uh, going on during my sixth grade year. The last and worst year of elementary school. Mad is the word that remains in my head about my dreadful year as a sixth grader. My madness was one that caused, or that was caused by disappointments that hurt me very much. Disappointments from my teacher, such as field trips that were planned, then canceled. My sixth grade teacher gave me a lot of disappointments, which made me very mad and made me 
built and and made me built a state of hatred in my heart. No one ever let me down that hard before, and I will never and I never hated anyone as much as I did him. Disappointment wasn't the only reason that made me mad in my sixth grade class. Another was getting in trouble at school, especially talking. That's what really bugged me was writing sentences, those awful sentence that my teacher made me write. Hours and hours, I'd sit and write 50, 100, 150 sentences a day. And, nine, and by night, those awful sentences that my teacher made me write. Or da, da, da. Oh, hold on. I was, okay. Those dreadful paragraphs, which embarrassed me, and more important, it made me ashamed of myself, which in turn, deep down inside, made me realize that writing sentences wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to make me suffer like that. It just wasn't fair to make me sit and write until my bones asked or bones ached. See, I'm trying to read in this dude. It's like so full of like misspellings. It's crazy. Um, until my hand felt every horrid pain it had ever had. And as I wrote, I got madder and madder until I cried. I cried because I was ashamed. I cried because I was disgusted. I cried because I was mad. And I cried for myself. Kid, who kept on having to write those damn sentences. My angriness from sixth grade will scar my memory for life. And I will be ashamed for my sixth grade year forever. Like, boo fucking who? Get I, over it. I know, right? But uh, <sighs> he did actually phone up uh, several times to the police department the first uh, uh one he was just announcing that he's the east side rapist but it was never recorded after that that uh they started recording them uh taunting the cops and everything saying you'll never uh you're never gonna catch me the east area rapist you dumb fuckers i'm gonna fuck again tonight be careful and he ended up attacking somebody You'll uh, never catch me, Kappas. And he was right. They, <laughs> the next victim was attacked that night. Uh, he even did it on 1977 Christmas season. He varied Merry Christmas. It's me again. God, some of these people back then. Now, nowadays, is a caller ID with almost everything. <clears throat> and you can't get away with that shit now. Nope. But, I mean, back, that that's just. When did, when was caller ID like starting to make prevalent like in the nineties? No, that was like eighty something. No, it was the nineties. Yeah, it was the night late late nineties, early early nineties. Yeah, well, as far as like coming into vogue and being widely used, yeah, it was closer to the late nineties. Yeah, but. Because that was when you could still star 69 people. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really strange as I had a friend in high school that uh, hacked the uh, caller ID. And he just said, it's me, fucker. And have the phone number and everything. Nice. Yeah. Classy. But uh, during the uh, investigation... Before officials connect, uh, connecting the original Night Stark to the East, uh, East Area Rapists in 2001, some law enforcement officers, particularly the oh, Sacramento my dog County opened Sheriff's my door. Hold on. Okay. Uh, links that were probably due to similarity as MO. One of the uh, already linked original Night Stalker uh, doubled murder <sighs> occurred in Ventura, 40 miles. Southeast of Gala. God damn fucking words. Galata. Is that Galata? Valhalla. All right. Galata. Uh, yeah. The re uh, remaining uh, murders were committed in Orange County, an additional 90 uh, miles southeast. In 2001, several uh, rapes in Costa Cata. Costa Cata. God, money. County believed to have been committed by the East Area Rapist were linked by DNA to the Smith Harrigan 
Harrington with with them and Cruz murders a decade later. DNA evidence and uh indicted that the Domingo uh, Sanchez murders were also committed by the East Area Rapist, also identified as the Golden State Killer. Ooh, moving up in the world. Yeah. On mm-hmm. June 15, 2016, the FBI reversed uh, further information rela- uh, related to the crimes, including uh, new composed sketches and crime details, a $50,000 Reward was uh, also announced. The initial uh, included a national database to support law enforcement investigations of the crime and to handle tips and information. This is one strange thing, though. When was he convicted? He was he was convicted. No, Dave apprehended was uh, April 24, 2018. Mm-hmm. So he, he got away charged, with it for a long time. Uh, he was charged on May 10th. And then... Well, eventually the use of genetic uh, genealogy search for a uh, GED match uh, investigators have been, uh, identified distant relatives of D'Angelo, including family members directly related to his great 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 grandfather, dating back to 1800s. Based on this information, investigators built a 25 different family tree. Good lord, they really wanted this motherfucker. The f- tree that eventually linked to D'Angelo also contained approximately a thousand people over the course of a few months. Investigators used other clues like age, sex, and place of residence to rule out suspects uh, pop- popula- populating these trees, uh, eliminating the suspects one by one until only D'Angelo remained. God, that's just, that's a lot. I guess they got tired of those cold cases and stuff. Yeah, March 4th, he, he offered to plead guilty to the de- if the death penalty were taken off the table. Prosecutors declined that 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 uh, that plea bargain. But then on Ju- uh, June 29th of 2020, um, as part of the plea bargain to avoid the death penalty, he pled guilty to 13 counts of first-degree murder in special circumstances, including murder committed during burglaries and rapes, um, as well as 13 counts of kidnapping. And on on August 21st of 2020, he received multiple consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Uh, He was offered a a brief, he offered a brief apology after listening to days of pre-sentencing victim impact statements. I've listened to all your statements, each one of them, and I'm truly sorry to everyone I have hurt, end quote. Man, they just, he, he just, he was just a st- fucking scumbag. <laughs> He's a shit pump of the highest. He committed most of the offenses while he was married and raising a family. Neither his wife nor his children ever suspected he was committing serious crimes. His eldest daughter thought he was the perfect father, while his wife believed his reasons for being away from home. Hmm. Uh, D'Angelo and- uh, D'Angelo made uh, confessions of sorts after uh, arrested that cryptically referred to his inner personality named Jerry, who had forced him to commit the waves of crime that ended abruptly in 1986. See, it's hard to believe stuff like that only because uh on on one note of it's one of those things as soon as you get arrested you start trying to figure out a way to uh get away, get out of it because a lot of the criminals that I, I worked with when i was working at uh corrections mm-hmm. they never did the crime or if they come up was like well if i did this and this a little bit differently i would have gotten away with it <laughs> hindsight's 2020 it's a pain in the ass i'm telling you 
Yeah. According to uh, Sacramento uh, County Prosecutor uh, Thin Ho, D'Angelo said the following of his, uh, himself while alone in the police investigation room uh, after his breath in April 2018. I didn't have the strength to push him out. He made me. He uh, went with me. It was like in my head. I mean, he's part of me. I didn't want uh, to do those things. I pushed Jerry out and had a happy life. I did all those things. I destroyed all those lives. So now I have to got, pay the price. See, he... I really, I'm, I'm looking at this right now. I'm trying to figure out they didn't have any kind of psychologist or any kind of thing. So, so he doesn't have a split personality syndrome. And that's, that's pretty much it on this one, but it, it's just on, on, on certain aspects of it. He, he, God, I wish you had gotten caught sooner, but. I mean, they taunted people. They couldn't trace the calls back then. The way right. they can do now. Uh, I mean, they didn't really drop the ball on this one. It's kind of the the situation of the time. They couldn't couldn't figure anything out. Yeah. He was he was actually one of those intelligence criminals that he didn't uh, he didn't make a mistake. Luckily, on certain aspects. I guess he didn't leave any uh, fingerprints on the knife they caught or the paperwork and everything. So, right. But other than that, this is this is one of those shitbag moments because he didn't get prosecuted until like the time frame of uh, um, May sixteenth of twenty twenty. Right. But other than that, I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Psychos and Sociopaths. Thank you for listening, everybody. Victory!